this is an AECTS uh, lunch uh, symposium which will uh, speak mainly about flow and ultrasound measurements during cardiac surgery. We gave it the title Will the Very QC, which is their new uh, device combining morphologic and physiological intraoperative assessment improve the outcome of cardiovascular surgery. And uh, the speakers uh, is Professor Jejan Marco, Kamler and Bergsland, and they will each address the topics which are listed also in your programs. Now let me start. I have a short introduction and this short introduction is to see what intraoperative quality assessment in cardiac surgery or cardiovascular surgery uh, can do. And as you know, this technique has been introduced, a transit time flow measurement has been introduced more than 20 years ago and has now a very widespread application. What are the benefits of this technique? Well, you probably all are familiar with this, but the benefits are the graph patency verification, the reduction of the number of post-operative complications, and thus the reduction of the number of days in the ICU, and the reduction of reoperation. I think this is the most important, the, the verification and the reduction of reoperation. Because by doing this, uh, you will save and improve the quality for the patient and the doctor of the result and especially cost effectiveness. This will certainly prevent a great number of uh, patients to have a complication like a myocardial infarction or a reoperation later. Now you know the basics of transit time flow measurement. Uh, the new machine uh, will combine a completely different aspect but the very Q has three essential features which are important. It has first a mean flow. The flow value is a real flow value. It's in millimeters per minute. That's number one. Number two, it has a pulsatility index and the pulsatility index is, uh, you see the formula, is mainly giving an idea of the uh, resistance and the combination of resistance and flow. If the pulsatility index is higher than 5 and the flow is lower than uh, 10 milliliters per minute, you have a real problem and you have to think of verifying your anastomosis. Additionally, if you have ECG triggering, you have the diastolic filling. And as you know, in um, cardiac surgery, the flow of the coronary arteries is mainly diastolic. This will not apply if you use it in vascular surgery. So this is different. In vascular surgery, you will have mainly a systolic flow. Now, uh, myself and others have done a lot of publications. I just want to remind you, we have been the first uh, of having use medicine transit time flow measurement in the world for coronary bypass graft. And this was presented at an EACTS meeting in uh, 95 actually. And uh, since then, uh, like others, we have worked a lot in this technology to uh, use it widespread in cardiac surgery. The there have been a lot of studies looking at the graph patency and the outcome of uh, such uh, of cardiac revascularization. And you see here um, a summary of these six uh, most relevant studies, which include 1,400 patients and about 4,000 anastomoses. And you see that there is a percentage of graft revision which is in the order of about 2% and this applies to about 5% of the patients. There is just now in press a new study from Alberta which will uh, add another thousand patients to this and uh, I think now this is very well established that this technique should and has to be used in every cardiac case since it is fast and simple to use it and gives you a very important information. Uh, having said that, I would like now to switch to the second part which should have been given by Dr. Damiano but for familiar reason he cannot be here and this is a, a pilot study to see 
what is the use and application of the new system, which is a very QC, uh, in vascular surgery. Now, the very QC combines the transit time flow measurement as uh, has been, as you probably all know, with the imaging capability and not only the imaging, also with the duplex capability, which is another way of assessing the physiology of flow. Uh, it can be used for epiotic imaging, and we will have a talk on this. It can be used for epicardial imaging, and we will also have a talk on this, uh, on two talks on this actually. And so I will not go into the details. In vascular surgery, as I mentioned, I will show you a few examples. And of course, it integrates also the flow measurement. So here is an example of using the ultrasonography uh, in vascular surgery interoperatively. Here you have a femoral artery after endarterectomy uh, and you see it's widely patent, it has no more plaques and it has a good diameter. So this is one thing you can say. You can make an axial view or a longitudinal view. This is easy to use, whereas if you are in a deep location, longitudinal views are easier to get because of the length of the crystal. You can also use duplex. Now duplex is nothing else than a Doppler ultrasound examination and uh, all the vascular surgeons and the angiologists are very familiar with this technique and here it is on a, a profunda uh, femoral artery the measurement of duplex and you can see again uh, that you have a uh, flow velocity curve this time of 125 centimeters uh, per second. So this is adequate for this vessel and so you can also combine this of course with the classical transit time measurement which will give you a quantitative flow immediately. Now the tricks or the how we use this, we have used it in the operating room by not sterilizing the probe because steroid sterilization uses normally uh, three days turnover and since we have only one probe we do it like uh, many surgeons do you just fill the probe with um, contrast uh, agent, with gel, and then you use a sterile cover, and this works very well. We are currently, we will do a comparative study in the experimental lab to see whether the duplex and ultrasound images are comparable, and we will hopefully let you know on one of these next symposiums. Now, what is important it's more difficult to use than just the transit time. And here, for instance, you see our vascular surgeon who has a lot of experience with duplex. So he is using the machine because to ask an operative nurse to use this, this is hopeless. I mean, if you want to do duplex correctly, you have to have somebody who has used it. That is one maybe a little bit limitation of the technique. What we also can do with this machine, you can do a pre- and post-operative assessment transcutaneously with this machine of your patient. So you can look at the patient before surgery while he's still awake and see what kind of uh, flow he has uh, in his vessel to be revascularized and you can look at it after the surgery when he's woken up in the ICU. So the same machine can be also used not only intraoperatively but also pre- and post-operatively. Now, what are the advantages of the duplex uh, ultrasound sonography? Well, there is, in the vascular surgery, there is less motion than during cardiac surgery. There is virtually, there is only the pulsatility, but there is no motion. This is a big advantage, because if you know <laughs> the motion is the enemy of ultrasound and dupler, duplex, this is something to know. Uh, you have normally larger vessels, you have more time for examination than cardiac surgery, uh, you can assess turbulence, back and competitive 
flow. And uh, the vascular surgeons, as I said, are normally trained for doing all these exams, so they are used to use such machines. Some drawbacks, of course, is operative operator variability, more though in uh, duplex examinations than if you use a uh, transit time flow, and it's more time consuming, and the precision we have to assess as experimentally to see if there is a change in precision. So let me come to the, to the difference uh, between transit time flow measurement and intraoperative uh, duplex assessment. Tra for, in my eyes, transit time flow measurement is faster, simpler, more precise than duplex because it gives you a real-time pulsatility index and, um, and um, diastolic filling value. Uh, it is operator independent, much less than the duplex. Thus. Uh, transit time may, may be a better outcome predictor than Doppler ultrasound exam. However, and this is the most important thing I want to tell you, it is a very important additional tool for intraoperative verification in case of inclus inconclusive transit time flow measurement. And I think this is exactly what most of we are aiming for. And this was a, a, a lack in the market to have such a machine which combines both the morphologic and the physiological issues because if you have a questionable anastomosis to be able to look at it is so something which all the surgeons would like to have and it's certainly less uh, invasive, less cumbersome than doing an intraoperative angio and this is certainly a very good combination and we will now hear from all the speakers what other applications there is.